Welcome to the Dr. Gundry podcast. So can you imagine having someone who was always in your corner focused on helping you look and feel as amazing as possible? Well, my guest today has made a career of doing just that. In just a moment, I'll speak with certified nutritionist, classically trained chef, and Reiki master Serena Poon. Serena, who's worked with the likes of Kerry Washington, Jerry Bruckheimer, and Sean P. Diddy Coombs, takes a holistic mind-body-soul approach to healthy living. And she isn't afraid to go outside the box. As a matter of fact, her work includes Reiki and functional and spiritual nutrition. And it's fascinating, to say the least. On this episode of the Dr. Gundry Podcast, Serena will tell us all about these practices and share ways you can achieve optimal health. Serena, it's nice to see you again. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was a special guest on your Instagram channel, and now here we are uh, with you on mine. Yes. It, Hi. Hi, Dr. Gundry. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's this great to have you fun. on the podcast today. Yeah, we always have such a fun time chatting. I love it. So you work in a very hybrid space of food, nutrition, energy healing. So what sort of people seek you out and, and what are their health needs? Uh, that's a great question since I, I cover a lot of ground. And, you know, I would say primarily my client base has very much been people are looking to optimize their health, obviously, but also heal. You know, I've had, I have probably very much like you, you know, I have people who come to me with different disorders or if they want to, you know, prepare for surgery, pre-op, post-op, different ways to really um, prepare their body for maximum healing. And then there are people that, as I said, just really want to maximize and optimize their health. But as my practice grew and evolved to include the energy work to include the Reiki. I also have a lot of clients who just want that aspect of my practice, just want that Reiki. And there are some, actually most of them now, they really like the combination of my method of culinary alchemy. And that's where we're using intuitive energy, we're using Reiki as well as the nutrition of food to do that optimization and to do that healing. All right, I want to take you back to that. So you said culinary alchemy. Uh, yeah. What the heck is culinary alchemy, and why is it important <laughs> for healthy living? Yes, well, culinary alchemy is my method of really combining integrative and functional nutrition with healing intuitive energy. And I do that primarily through Reiki. So essentially, we're really working with the whole body, you know, with the physical body, your physiological body, your mental, emotional body, and what I call your energetic body, which some people may also call spiritual body. So we're balancing your physiological and your spiritual bodies through the energetics of nutrition. You know, we sort of use food as that, as one of the vehicles for that, along with, of course, mindfulness, energetic practices. So... so a lot on the balance and health of your chakra system. Gotcha. So you so you take a very holistic approach to wellness, obviously. Yes. So all right. So where take me on the spectrum. Where where does where does food fit in? Where does Reiki uh, fit in? Where does spirituality fit in? Or is it just uh, you know the you got to have it all? Right. It sounds like yeah. you got to have it all. Yeah. So that's a great question, and I think my practice has evolved from where I started. You know, I started my journey as a chef because I really wanted to understand food as medicine and really use the culinary arts to cultivate that as a medicine for the physical body. And throughout my journey, through some of my own health challenges, I realized that there is a level of there was a level of mindfulness of self-care that wasn't included in just the tangibles of movement, exercise, and food. And I came to understand that 
clear, I believe in energy, obviously, and that there's a vibration that connects us universally, and that there's a vibration in energy when it comes to food. And as I mentioned, I believe in the energy centers, the chakra system that aligns with our organ systems. And I realized that it works very cohesively, you know, the balance of your of your organ system also aligns with the balance of your energy of your energy center there. So what I do when I work with a client, you know, we go as you said, we go across the spectrum. We start with doing labs so that we can see what's going on inside of your physical body. Where do you have deficiencies, inflammation? You know what what your intolerances are. Just what is going on in your physical body? And then I do a fairly extensive intake form which actually tells me uh, from like a Chinese medicine perspective and an Ayurvedic perspective what your body constitution is. And then I do an energy, what I call an energy intake, which is that Reiki, and I do a read of your chakra system to see where the imbalances are within your energy, your energy centers. And then we create uh, a protocol, you know, a program using foods to foods and of course um, because it is very holistic I include other modalities right so there's food there's different modalities mindfulness um, to to really heal you or optimize you and and we build we build a system from there so that's sort of how everything is included now is this done prior to COVID in person or have you done it remotely um... oh yeah um, well, pretty. I, I, if a client is able to meet in person, obviously pre-COVID, uh, we always did because that's a really great way for me to read a person's energy um, and to kind of give a read about who they are. And I, and I just, I'm a people person. I very much like that rapport and that connection with someone. But after that, we usually just talk on the phone or over Zoom, and we do. We do catch up uh, calls remotely, and over COVID, it's just been something that's been a great resource to so many people because we can definitely still do that work. You know, I can still order your labs, I can still read your labs, process the intake, and then we can still do the energy work because with Reiki, there's something called distal Reiki, and it's where I can work and read and send energy from a distance. But we do the process as if that person is in the room with me. So if we were to do a Reiki session, Dr. Gundry, I would I would have you create space and time where you are going to lay for 30 minutes or 60 minutes to receive. And so it would be very much the same. I'm just not actually in the same room with you, but the process other than that is very much the same and it's very effective. All right, I'm gonna stop you there because some of our listeners are going, now wait a minute. You're, you're, you're claiming that you can read my energy remotely and that you can send me energy signals remotely. Now, is, yeah. so is that, is that voodoo, is that pseudoscience, or is there evidence that this in fact can happen? Well, I think that there's, there's some growing evidence between, uh, say, quantum physics and, and also and energy and spirituality, and we're seeing a lot more of that. Do I have like a hard reference that I can give you with a study? You know, I should probably have one in, in my back pocket. I don't at the time. But yes, I, there is uh, some of it, of course, is how open you are, you know, and we talk about how we all know that energy is really made up of everything, that frequency that connects all of us. And I think that anyone that's ever practiced some degree of meditation can feel that when you're in a moment that you're going to receive, you do feel that we talk about good vibes, bad vibes, you can be sitting next to somebody, you know, at a restaurant and feel a vibration from them that you know that that we've all experienced uh, and so and so it works very much like that it's just that in a close proximity you think that it's somewhat tangible but it's still not right and so from a place of distance the same can be done as long as it's about intention so when I'm working with people and we're working with food and we're working with energy and we're working with healing a lot of it does come from that connection with intention and I, and I can walk 
I can walk us through an exercise later if you'd like to kind of give people an example of what that feels like. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. In fact, um, there's a, there's a, a number of uh, integrative physicians who have actually written books about yes. um, having everyone reading that book uh, have a remote sending out energy simultaneously mm -hmm. and receiving energy. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, there, there are, you know, accomplished uh, physicians that actually, um, you know, more than just believe this, have, have actually written papers uh, about oh, absolutely, you know, yeah. the, the fact that... Uh, Dan Siegelman is, uh, Dan Siegel, he's, he, he's a physician yep. and he's a scientist. Yep. He, there, he's written all kinds of books. Yep. Uh, yeah. Obviously, there's Joe Defense. I mean, there's there's a lot of doctors and scientists and research scientists uh, that have made that connection and have put it on paper. Uh, so, so yes, absolutely. So, it, just to bring it again, so is the same sort of thing. Let's let's use a different example. Is mm -hmm. having a prayer group or sending prayers for support to somebody in the hospital who is going through a tough time. Is, yeah. is that the same sort of thing you're talking about? Yes, it is. Absolutely. I say that it's very much the same. So whether it's prayer or you're doing Reiki or you're doing pranic healing or you're doing Theta, whatever it is, I mean, at the end of the day, it's having an intention and sending out a, a vibration of healing. So, you know, people ask me, what is Reiki? Reiki is the, is the Japanese, you know, modality of, of using that universal energy and channeling it into one direction or another. Uh, but in my opinion, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's different names, very much like religion, right? right. I mean, everyone has their own religion, but at the end of the day, what are we all doing? We're all doing the same thing. So prayer very much. So if you're going to Reiki your food before you have it, it's sort of like when you say grace, you know, it's the same thing. It's very, very similar. So if, I, so if I'm in the, in the kitchen and somebody walks in and saying, I'm wrecking my food, um, th that doesn't mean I'm stirring it around necessarily, right? <laughs> no, not exactly. But but you could do a little thing, and you can be making your food. Gotcha. Well, and you know, as you know, I uh, I'm a plant predator, and uh, plants actually do have feelings, and Absolutely. they actually have memory, and this has yeah. actually been proven. So I think yeah. even our my devout vegan friends and patients. Um, we, we harm plants by eating them and uh, we have to, we actually have to be thankful that, you know, we're allowed to eat them. Absolutely. There's, and plants have their vibration. All, everything has that vibration. So I agree with you a hundred percent. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a way that people can really connect to what I'm saying. And it's where, you know, if you do a gratitude practice, for example, and you are, and what I tell clients, what I tell my community is, it's not just, oh, I'm, I'm grateful for my home, and I'm grateful for my dog, and I'm grateful for my family. It's more, think about something that you are so grateful for. It actually, you get almost a visceral feeling. You know, you think about that person, that or that place, or whatever it is, and it evokes in you a feeling that, that you can feel almost physically. It's that feeling and that that's that's the connection, that energetic connection. That's what you will be channeling into, say, the food that you eat, and in turn your body receives it back. So so we can walk through it a little bit later, but it's that's what I mean when I'm talking about energy that we can use, that your listeners can use the next moment they're in the kitchen as they're preparing their matcha or their or their veggies, or their dinner, whatever it is, it's evoking that feeling within yourself and then putting it back into the food. Okay, well, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I think this is a perfectly great time. As you know, this COVID crisis has disrupted everyone's lives in, in more ways than one. And yeah. a lot of people uh, no longer are employed. And yeah. we've, I've talked with other guests. So 
this is some of the most stressful times probably that anyone's been through. Maybe the most stressful time that anybody's been through. And if yes. and you're not, you don't have a job, you don't know when, if you're going to pay the rent, uh, you got two kids at home that are driving you crazy. Uh, yeah. how, how, tell me how to practice gratefulness when everything's falling apart. Um, got some thoughts? Oh, absolutely. That's a great question, Dr. Gundry, and um, and I'm so glad you asked because it's actually so much, it's simpler than people think. When we're in this place of, you know, fight and flight, when we're stressed out like that, when the world seems like it's falling apart, it's because we're focused on that which we don't have. You know, we're focused on the loss. We're focused on, on what we cannot control, you know, and, and, and that's the focus. So if that's our focus, as we're sending energy towards what we don't have, um, towards that loss, that is going to continue channeling that kind of that, that inflammation energetically and physically within our body. So you just simply do the opposite. You know, you, you focus on what you do have. You've got two kids, they're driving you nuts, but it's better than not having them. You know, you have, you've lost your job, but you have skills and you're healthy. I mean, I had COVID. So if you're listening out there and you didn't have COVID, that is the first thing that should be on your gratitude list is that I am, I'm safe and I'm healthy and I'm in a home and we can figure it out. I mean, that, that may sound like, okay, that's just being a little bit too positive, but look around because if you look around you, if you look around you, you'll see so many things that you actually have and the things that you have control of. And so you might not have control of the stock market. You might not have control of what's going on in the time of vaccines or no vaccines or whatever is going on in the news, but you have control of what you do with your body. So you have control of movement, you have control of your breath, you have control of the food that you put in, um, you have control of how much you hydrate your body, and it doesn't have to be you know, expensive things. Just keeping yourself hydrated puts your body at an optimal um, immune level. Just and as Dr. Gundry knows, you know, just staying hydrated is so key to your immune system, and that's something that all of us can do. So I would say focus on those things, dumb it down to the basics, and then start from there. All right, gr great advice. Yeah, I'm glad glad we talked about that. So um, what I I love all the what many people think are crazy things that you do, and I'm going to get you to talk about another potential crazy thing, and you work with crystals, right? I do. I do. All right. I so, all kinds of healing modalities. All right. There's a bunch behind me. I know. I know. <laughs> so, for the uninitiated, tell me about crystals, crystal work, the energy in crystals. And again, talk talk to me like uh, I've never heard of such a crazy thing. And how, <laughs> how can a crystal help? How's that? So, so let's think about the things that are connected to the earth that have healing have healing attributes for us. There's a healing energy to it. For some people, the ocean is very healing. The sounds of the wave going into the ocean. Of course, there's the salt, but just, just being in the ocean can be healing. Having your feet grounded into the earth, walking in the grass, these are things that connect you and ground you to the earth, to Mother Earth, because there's a vibration with our earth. Crystals come from the earth. So just like the foods that come from the earth, all these root vegetables and just everything, there's a vibration. So it's it's kind of not that different than other other um, other things, other objects that we identify that can be healing for us. So we may not ingest a crystal, but there is an energetic vibration that comes with the crystals. And, it, and a lot of it is also, of course, your belief system, right? So there are crystals that are believed to, to hold an energy that can help with calming, you know, that can help with soothing, that can help with anxiety. To a degree, you have to be open to that. 
but you also have to be open when you go to a doctor and think that this doctor is going to be able to help you with your skin problem or your heart problem. You're open to receive the information. I don't see it that different when it comes to crystals. I mean, there's there needs to be maybe more scientific evidence because that's a tangible that a lot of people believe. But when you pray or when you go to church or when you do your own ceremonies, those, those things aren't necessarily tangibles. It's a belief. And that belief in and of itself has a tremendous healing power to it. So I work with crystals when I do Reiki. I work with crystals when, um, even with the foods, you know. I mean, I, I wear them because I, be I believe that they channel an energy. Yay! Do you have yours? I love it. Um, but of course, that is because you believe that, that this tiger eye helps me channel an energy of passion or abundance. And so it's, it all kind of comes back down to the mind, right, and your belief system. But that is an energy that you want to continue to circulate within your energetic body and your physical body. So that's kind of a very basic response to crystals, but I hope that makes sense. Yeah. So back in the back in the old days, I had a pet rock. Um, <laughs> so maybe that pet rock was very useful, you know, for me to to have. Yeah. And actually, and it's interesting. My my father uh, actually used to carry around a a smooth stone, a flat stone in his pocket, you know, every day in work. And he, he said, you know, he'd reach into his pocket and he'd rub this stone um, whenever there was anything stressful going on. And he said, you know, it was a great way to take my mind off of whatever was, you know, bothering me at work. And uh, yeah, he always had this rock, a little, a little tiny. Yeah. Thing. So there you go. Yeah, I love that. I mean, a lot of it is belief and intention, right? Like we make associations in so many different ways. If you're feeling like um, you need a little bit of comfort, some people may reach for, for, and I, I'm just going to use a dessert as an example. It's not the best example, but let's say that apple pie. It soothes you, it comforts you, even the smell of it if you don't eat it because it reminds you of your mom sure. or your grandma. Sure. Or you know your childhood, but you can use that. You can have that same association of comfort um, with these crystals because that's what you're told or they're known to represent. Perfect. All right. Now, recently you posted about lymphatic massage. So, yeah. number one, tell me about the benefits, and number two, how do people can people do this at home? Oh, absolutely. I mean, lymphatic, lymphatic massage is, is such a great way to kind of help detox your body. I mean, lymph for those of you that don't know, lymphatic drainage is just a really gentle massage of the lymphatic system that's, that's designed to help detoxify, you know, move, at, move your lymphatic flow. So, so your lymphatic system is made up of organs and tissues that kind of act like a deep cleaner, right, for your body. And so that fluid holds a lot of white blood cells that flow through and you want to get rid of those toxins and waste and byproducts that collect in different parts of your body. So you can either do lymphatic uh, at home by using dry brushing, and that's so simple. You can get a dry brush at just about any like a uh, pharmacy or drugstore. They cost a few dollars. You can get them online if you're if you're being COVID safe and you're not going anywhere. Uh, and all you do is just lightly brush your limbs down towards the direct, uh, up towards your heart. And from your arms, you bring it down towards your heart because that helps with circulation and flow. So the benefits of that include, um, obviously it includes the, the movement of toxins out of your body. Um, it, it helps with water loss. Um, for people who are, say, have lymphedema, which is holding too much water, it moves that. It can help with your skin. It can help with your digestion. I mean, any time that you can remove toxins from your body, it's beneficial for your entire system. So those are some things. And I, it's something that I recommend for, for people who are, let's say you just had surgery or something like that. Any time you're, you're kind of holding that weight, it's a great way to just move move the lymph system, move the fluids out, move the toxins out. Do you ever have uh, anybody get themselves a rebounder at home? Oh yeah, I have one right here. Ah, there you go. I love that. That's another great way. Those are, it's another great way to like move the lymphatic system. And it's 
so low impact. Um, anyone that has joint issues, I, I suggest get a rebounder because you're just moving around. And it's a great thing to do first thing in the morning. If you can dry brush for five to 10 minutes, if you can jump on that rebounder for 10 or 15 minutes, it's a great way to wake up your body and allow your body to flush out everything that had happened the night before as your body was resetting and cleansing itself. Yeah, and they're actually remarkably inexpensive. And people always say, well, I'm gonna fall off of it, but a ton of them <laughs> come with a little handle that you can hold on to if you're really worried. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are great, and they're a lot of fun. Oh, they are. And then, you know, what? if you if you can do you can do at home workouts on the, on them too, as well. Well, yeah. So fun. so funny. Um, you know, my my friend and patient Tony Robbins has a rebounder right before he goes up the stairs to the stage, and it's so yeah. it's so fun being backstage with him. And he before he goes out before every you know part of his show. He, he's on the rebounder uh, to get it, yeah. his, and he's getting his energy going on the rebounder. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a great trick, great trick. It is. Every, I mean, every day, that's one of the first things I do, just for a little bit of movement. Uh, and it's, a, it's, just, it's, a great, it's a great little hack, too, for not just energy, but your overall health. So um, Obviously, not everybody can come see you or see you remotely or hire a professional like yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always like to give folks, you know, things that they can do at home, like, for instance, dry brushing. What are other things that, you know, starting tomorrow uh, that people can do at home to, to do some of the things you'd, you'd like us to do? Okay, that's a great question. So. So we talked about water and hydration, right? So that's something that I would say most people are dehydrated. So one of the first things that people can do is drink um, and drink more water. I, I, I give clients a pretty high number as their goal, which is you know close to one ounce per pound that they weigh as long as they have no kidney issues and they're not, they're not deficient in electrolytes. It's a goal. If you can get halfway there um, or three quarters of the way there, that would be great. But what we talked about earlier with the gratitude practice in the morning, but, but connecting physically with that feeling of something that you're grateful for, and then taking that to your food or your water or your coffee or your tea immediately and sending that energy and just having that intention that you want to connect and send that energy that you felt earlier into that meal that or as you're preparing and that's sort of the best way so when you're preparing that food to have that feeling kind of infuse and go into it um, that would be another tip and I again we had talked about uh, energy centers and the chakras and the chakras align of course with physical our organ systems so if you want to try and create balance and um, you're obviously following the Gundry diet, then you choose foods that are kind of across the spectrum of the rainbow so that you're targeting every single energy center. You're staying with gun Gundry friendly foods. Thank and you, you make sure that, that your meals uh, throughout the day cover the spectrum of the rainbow. And that would be something that, and, and a lot of people don't really realize they don't eat enough. Uh, of different colored foods because you're getting different phytonutrients, you're, different, you're d getting different micronutrients from different foods and different levels of fiber and fat and so that's something that's really important because most people I find have their two or three go-to's and that's what they stick to every single day and a variety in your diet is so important clearly for your gut health as well as your brain health but it's also good for your uh, chakra health. All right. Yeah, years ago, actually, with my first book, um, Dr. Gundry's Diet Evolution, we mm -hmm. found that the average person, the average American, has only five go-to meals that they eat on a rotating basis, and yeah. they—that—that's all they do. And uh, yeah. yeah, and so it's you know, in a way, it's that's what you get and fix but in a way it's so different than the way our ancestors would have eaten th Absolutely. thousands of years ago in fact modern hunter-gatherers 
um, mm -hmm. eat and interact with about 200 different plants on a mm -hmm. rotating basis. And even my, you know, devout organic eaters, when I say, excuse me, you know, how many, how many different organic plants did you eat last year? And they'll go, oh, you know, 30. And I will, you know, good for you, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, when we had talked about my practice of culinary alchemy, right? And, you know, one of the things that I do want to remind people of is, uh, and I can, I have, I have a chart that I use ah. for clients. But, um, and some people in my community, and it's where you want to eat in alignment of those chakras, because as you're eating in alignment for those chakras, which is why you want to eat the rainbow, um, you're also eating in alignment for your mental and emotional health as well, as your physical, as your physiological body. So it's just important to try and target every one of those to kind of keep things in balance. And it's important to check in with yourself. That's something that you might need to work with me a little bit on, but you can check in with yourself. Let's say you're feeling um, ungrounded because of all the stress of what's going on in the world. If that's the case, then you want to re reach for grounding foods. You know, you want to reach for foods that come from the earth. You know, you want to reach for foods that kind of help balance out uh, that energy center and help kind of bring you back into a parasympathetic system so that you can digest properly and that you can tone down the overall inflammation in your in your system. So those are things to think about. So uh, now you're going to have me ask another question. How, how do you check mm -hmm. in with yourself in a time mm -hmm. like this? Uh, give, us, give us a hint. And, I mean, do I call myself on the phone or... <laughs> Visit me on Zoom or, I mean, give, give us a hint on how do you check in with yourself? Because I think you're right. I think most people don't really check in with themselves. They react. Yeah, 100%. You know, you're reacting. So, so it kind of boils down, again, back to the basics. You know, it's just taking a moment and taking a breath and connecting to where you really are. Like, try to feel yourself, feel your body like this, you know, this is my body. This is, this is, these are my legs. This is like, feel yourself and just, and sometimes it helps to sit. I would say, try to have your feet on the floor so that you can connect with, this is feeling the, the floor beneath your feet. And I think that that's the first thing you do is to get yourself in a place where you have presence of where you're at. And our body tells us things all the time. Our body talks to us, which is what people forget. You know, by the time you're thirsty, your body's screaming at you that you're super dehydrated. We know when there's pain, your body's telling you there's a problem here, but it's kind of screaming. Before we get to that point, the body talks to us and tells us when there's a little tick, there's something that's not quite right. So when you're checking in with yourself, sit there, take a breath, get grounded. What feels, what feels off? You know, is it is it in your head? Is it in your heart? Is it in your stomach? And you'll feel it. You just have to take that moment. Now, if it's in your stomach, are you hungry? Is it something that's upsetting? And you just kind of think for a second, like, is this something that's physical or is this something that's in my mind? You know, or is this something that's in my heart? And I say that because I'm talking about emotions, right? So so check in and then and then once you start doing that. Once you have that presence and you start to try and break down, what is it that I'm feeling? Where is it coming from? Your mind's already shifted. Your attention and your focus is already shifted. And, and it'll, it'll allow you to kind of come up with, with a solution. So either you're hungry, you're not, your stomach hurts, you, you realize your stomach hurts because you've got bad news. So you can go address that. Um, I don't know if that's helpful, but I, th I mean, I think that presence is, is one of the key things. That reminds me, uh, years ago I was uh, doing uh, mission work in Zimbabwe, uh, operating on, on children in Zimbabwe, and in the hospital in Zimbabwe, um, there was a big sign, and it, 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 all, it caught my attention because I saw it every day. And it, the big sign says, sometimes I sits and thinks, and other times I just sits. 
Mm -hmm. And actually, as you were saying that, I was saying, you know, that's exactly uh, what Serena is saying to do. Uh, sometimes you want to sit and think, but other mm -hmm. times just the sitting, just the, you know, the quiet, uh, you'll find out a lot of things, right? Oh, yeah, you will. And, and as you said, Dr. Gundry, most of the times we're reacting. So, you know, this gives you an opportunity to to just be and then act. And then usually when you do that, you can make a decision from clarity if you are going to have a thought and a decision after that, uh, because you're, you're not in this, in this hyper uh, sympathetic state. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so are there any new exciting advances in intuitive healing modalities that you're excited about, new tools you're learning about? What's, what's the next step? Um, I've actually been playing with this device that's really cool. So, uh, I mean, I, and I, I just got a hyperbaric, uh, machine, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for my, for my home. It's not new. It's, it's, you know, a modality that has been around for a long time, but I find it be very beneficial. And I've been using, I've been using this little device. Um, and it's. And tell us what it is. Cause a lot of people are just listening to this. Oh yes, yeah. so sorry about that. Yes, it's called a Healy, but it's a microcurrent device. So it's kind of it's working with frequencies and your resonance. And there are there have been a lot of other devices out there like it where it's using something tangible to read the the, the electromagnetic frequency in your body and to and to balance out or clear blockages. So there's a lot of doctors that use this. It's, you know, think about like the Rife from a long, long time ago. It's same kind of ideology, but fast forward to where we are now. And this is a wearable device that, again, I said I've been playing with. It's called the Healy. Uh, and, and what it does, it's been FDA approved for pain. But what's interesting is that I've used it for energy. You know, I've used it to to help align and balance out, say, someone's energy centers. Uh, I've also used it for pain. So it's 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 a really it's a really interesting sort of fascinating device. You might want to play with mine. I mean, the next time you're in LA, you can come oh. come play with mine. <laughs> But um, it's it's very very cool, and so and it's what, very small. Uh, for what you held up is what oh, uh, yeah. three inches by three, two inches by it's two inches, by maybe two by two yeah. for the people that are listening. And it's a wearable device, and and what you do is you can either wear it on yourself. You can wear it with wristlets. Um, there's electrodes as well, depending. And what's very cool about it is that it, it reads, it, it can, you do an analysis. It sort of reads your resonance, the frequency in, that's, that you're in in this moment. And then it makes suggestions of where there are energetic blockages. So, and then if you run that program, which is kind of brilliant the way they've done it. So in the past, doctors, physicians, researchers that I've used frequencies, they have to sort of manually set the frequency for the patient. You know, they'll run it at 639 hertz for two minutes and then they shift it to 39 and it's a whole process. This device has it presets. So let's say you have pain in your back or you have joint pain or you have whatever it is, you know, there's a preset program and you just wear the wrist wristlets for however long it says and you run this program and it actually does alleviate pain. It has cleared, uh, you know, we all had Zoom fatigue for, for a moment there, right? And your eyes can get tired. There's a setting where you can run it and after about 20, 25 minutes, that fogginess with your eyes clears and your eyes are no longer tired. So something I haven't talked about that, you might be the first actually, Doctor, the first time I've really shared that because I've- Oh good, just, like, breaking anything. news folks. <laughs> I mean, the device has recently been introduced to the US a couple months ago, but um, I just like to really dive in and, and, and understand and play with a modality and the science behind it before I really start to introduce it. But I've seen, uh, I've seen a lot of success with it. So from the energetic side, there's not as much science to, to back that up tangibly. 
from the physical side, it's an FDA approved device. So there's obviously a lot of science and data for that aspect of the device, of the machine, but uh, it's pretty cool. And I think it's something that for people who don't have access to practitioners on a regular basis, something that would be very useful for them. And it, it's not a prescription. You, know, you can get it on the internet and... Yeah, you can get it online. I mean, I can send you a link to it if you'd like and people can, if, when you share this podcast and and uh, actually yeah, I'll do that. And then people can go there and they'll see. Uh, and there's different devices. I use one that's for a practitioner. Ah, okay. Where you know, I can read, uh, you know, I can read someone's resonance with it. And when I combine that with Reiki, when I combine that with my intuitive read, it's so accurate that it even, I mean, it even kind of surprises me still. I ran it on someone just last night. Uh, it was fascinating. You know, she had complained of, she had complained of shoulder like pain in her arm. It was excruciating. So I said, okay, let's run this program. And as you know, before we even got, I already knew just from doing an energy read what the percentage was that I should have her set at. We ran the program. It pointed out pain. There's 140, 120 programs. It pulled pain. It pulled joint, and it showed me on the app exactly where to put the electrodes, which was exactly where she told me. And then as we ran the program, we, I, you know, we kind of moved it up and down and she told me her comfort level and we landed at exactly the percentage that I knew it would be from the energy read. So again, like culinary alcohol, I'm combining food and energy and the nutrition into a, a, a protocol to help heal someone. I've found that this device is kind of fascinatingly, um, it, it's just exciting that I can add it in and and we saw immediately results. She she wasn't completely free of pain, but she said it reduced it by at least 40% and we ran it for 50 minutes. Yeah. So, right. yeah, pretty cool. All right, well, I'm glad I asked that question. So, yeah, I do. So, Serena, it's been great you know, seeing you again and having you on the podcast. Now, you have a lifestyle brand and a new TV show, is that right? Yes, yes, I do. I have a Serena Loves TV. It's also a podcast. Oh, very cool. And so where, where do people find you? So they can find me on Instagram. It's Chef Serena Poon. S-E-R-E-N-A-P-O-O-N uh, on my website, serenaloves.com. And you'll find everything there. You'll find links to uh, all the other social platforms and YouTube and the podcast, which is Serena Loves. You guys will find all of that. And we have a wellness line uh, called Just Add Water, and you'll find that there as well. And that's a, another you know, really exciting a exciting project that we work on. My sister and I were partners, um, and that's like a super nutrient dense superfood. So, so different things that you know we offer just to help people heal and optimize. So, sleep is a huge issue, probably particularly now. Do you yes. do you have any advice? I mean, do people need to change their mattress? Do they need to wear blue blockers? Uh, what? Where do you where do you see you fitting in on sleep? Uh, I I'd say that the if you can get one of those glasses, those blue blockers glasses, and you're using that at least the hour or two before bedtime, that's very helpful. But I've also found different herbs, and this is a big part of my practice, is using um, natural, organic, either supplements or herbs to help to help balance and soothe your body. And there's definitely different herbs that are helpful for that. So, you know, we're familiar with uh, we're familiar with chamomile tea, but there's also passion flower, and you can drink it as a tea, uh, or you can, you know, take it as a supplement if you need to. Um, those are great things to do before bed to kind of help relax your system. I also recommend magnesium, you know, and I recommend magnesium glycinate, something that I do as well, just to kind of help ease and relax. Um, a lot of people are deficient in magnesium, so that's also helpful in that sense. Uh, when it comes to your mattress, I mean, yes, of course, I'm not the expert on mattresses, <laughs> uh, but having a good mattress is, is obviously very important. But I would say, you know, if you can do that gratitude practice you do in the morning, 
If you can do it before bed, it helps to ease your mind. Um, and your focus is on things that relax you, make you happy, calm you. And you want those thoughts to be the thoughts that you have as you go into you know, sleep and rest. So those are really helpful. And there's, there's a few other um, herbs as well. But passion flowers is usually my go-to. Uh, and magnesium glycine are my go-to if you're going to do teaser supplements. And a little bit of a breathing always helps as well. The 444, that can really help. Yeah, I, actually, I like uh, lavender essential oil as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Essential oils are fantastic. And, That's great. And the, Sometimes you can rub it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just rub it. Um, and, uh, the other thing that I've found very interesting is there's an amino acid called glycine. And yes. glycine actually lowers body temperature. And so I have a lot of my really, you know, troublemaking sleep deprived people try mm -hmm. taking a thousand milligrams of glycine about an hour before they go to bed. It's just a, a tablet and yeah. it drops their yeah. temperature. And there's actually very well controlled clinical trials that it That's really right. aids sleep. So anybody, so all great tricks. Okay, great. And a Himalayan salt lamp, I would say that as well. Oh, so. that, there you have the exactly. And I think you've got one behind there. If, if, she's got a bunch of crystals behind her. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's definitely good crystals for sleep. We have apocalyte. That's not that's not behind me, but apocalyte is great for sleep as well. And so is halite. Very good. So the great crystals for sleep. All right. Great pieces of advice. And thank you again. And I'm sure we'll be Instagramming or something together. Thank you so much, Dr. Grenier. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. And take care. Thanks so much, Dr. Gundry. I really, I, I loved it. So. Uh, our pleasure. That was great. Great information. Thanks. Okay, it's time for our audience question. Uh, live Health and Wellness, or it could be Live Health and Wellness, on Instagram asks, if you are going to have dessert, like ice cream or cookies, is there a best time of day to cheat? Well, first of all, uh, I hope you're not having ice cream and cookies unless they're one of my recipes from the various books. As you know, we've got some great avocado-based ice creams, which I think are fantastic. And we've got so many great cookie recipes using almond flour and coconut flour and the alternative flours that you can have these you know, decadent treats but actually improve your gut health, feed your gut bugs without destroying things. But the interesting thing about these sweet treats, you're better off having them earlier in the day rather than later in the day. And that's not usually when we have these. So if you had an alternative between having them after lunch and having them after dinner, try to get them in earlier during the day. And you'll actually I'm going to give you a bunch of tricks in my upcoming uh, new book, The Energy Paradox, on how to pull this off, how to cheat uh, without killing yourself and your energy. Oh, great question. All right, it's time for the review of the week. Uh, following my recent episode with the fitness podcaster Ben Greenfield, Dragonfly on YouTube wrote, This was so interesting. I've also worked in sleep medicine, but the information here was more than I learned on my journey. Well, okay, thank you very much. Well, we're trying on the Dr. Gundry podcast to introduce you to lots of different areas of health, like in today's podcast, for instance. So, you know, keep the cards and letters coming in, and if you want to hear something, I'm happy to find out what we can for you and get them on the show. So. That's it for today. We'll see you next week on the Dr. Gundry Podcast. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you.